Pluto won't hurt ya. Oh, no, 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 oh, he won't hurt oh. ya. Get down. Yeah, Purgatory won't hurt any of us. Why don't you let me fix you some of this new mo cocoa drink? All natural cocoa beans from the upper slopes of Mount Nicaragua, no artificial sweeteners. What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? This has been our reaction to so much of what's gone down in this matrix and our own lives. Just like Truman's wife, many of our loved ones aimed to make us seem crazy for simply walking the path of truth. Tell me what's happening! Well, you're having a nervous breakdown, that's what's happening. You're part of this, aren't you? And of course, like Truman's best friend, We've had those in our lives who just wish to drink a beer and chill out on all that finding the truth stuff. As Truman wakes up, he realizes that spontaneity and following his intuition makes his surroundings glitch, leading him further to the truth, rather than following the norms that his surroundings suggest him to maintain. Truman, where are we going? I really know. I guess I'm being spontaneous. Oh. <laughs> Locked it every turn. Beautifully synchronized, don't you agree? In realizing reality isn't what he thought it was, Truman starts exploring, leading him to confirming that he's the center stage of it all. This is just like what the living souls have gone through. Our own experiences have become more and more misaligned with the narratives of existence taught to us by our families, the media, government, school systems, workforce, and even parts of the truther movement. Of course, Truman's awakening, like ours, is met with some obstacles, but each obstacle ends up propelling Truman into following his own heart. Truman's greatest fear is the water. As a child, his father's death was staged to keep Truman in fear's bondage about boats and anything having to do with water. At the end of the movie, he faces his greatest fear in an effort to leave his old life behind. He sails away, allegorizing the confrontation of one's shadows and facing ourselves in an effort to find the authentic self. He can no longer stay in the matrix of deceit. After a great storm inflicted by Kristoff, Truman remains, hits a wall of sky, and into the void he walks, exiting the matrix. He has completed the inner alchemy of breaking free from all earthly restraints, limiting beliefs, and judgments. And that is how the movie ends. This whole time, we've been guided to confront the depths of our sub and unconscious to look at the monsters under the bed. Singularity is about merging the light and the dark into a central force that soaks all of creation in unity. Truman poses as if he is on a cross before he exits the dream world. He has become of Christ. This is Christ consciousness being reborn. The cross, as we've explained before, represents the cubing of our consciousness. A cross is a cube unfolded, and we funneled ourselves into this dream to be reborn. There's a scene in which Truman is shown sleeping coated by an emerald light. This is significant because we've been saying on this channel that we're in the emerald dream, meaning we're sleeping until we can reintegrate the emerald heart energy that was obfuscated into the above and below. Truman exiting the matrix is really his exit from the emerald dream, reclaiming everything that he is in order to leave. In one scene, a button reads, how is it going to end? That question has been on all of our minds, and we know how it all ends. The Matrix always was a figment of one's innermost. It ends when that condition is resolved, and the heart space dissolves the net of magnetics, which has held together the toroidal structure of this temporary encasement.